All right, welcome to the second video in this series on web components. If you watched the last video, you would have got an introduction to web components, the state of web components uh, right now, coming to the end of 2019 into 2020. I last did a video in web components in 2017, and it was really early on. Version one spec hadn't even been released properly yet, and I was just looking at it. Uh, since then, there's been a lot of support for web components. It seems to be something that's really picking up. Um, in the last video, we went on caniuse.com and we looked at support and um, we see that custom elements, version 1 spec, there's about 89% adoption right now. Seems like it's partially supported by iOS Safari, really good support for Android phones. So Android users are lucky. Pretty much Chrome support since version 67 and Firefox since 63. So everything is good there. And then the latest versions of Edge are there as well. Uh, as we go down, imports aren't that supported as of yet. So it's probably better to keep away from that. There are some flags that you can enable to use that functionality if you really want. But for now, it's probably safer to not do that. HTML templates, so using the template tag uh, is pretty much widely supported. Uh, all the latest phone browsers have support for that. And pretty much partial support for the Shadow DOM if it, uh, for Safari users and mobile Safari users. Obviously Chrome has full support as does Firefox. And that's pretty much the summary for it. Google really has adopted web components up to now and they've pretty much been championing it. I was reading something uh, about them teaming up with the Salesforce team who's really taken to this technology as well. So it's cool to see and hopefully there will be some really cool things that come out of it. So for this video, we're gonna be looking at one of the frameworks uh, that you can use to create web components easily because there's a, there's a little bit of boilerplate that you have to get before you can start really using this technology. In this series, we're gonna be comparing five different frameworks and tools. So this is the first one, Let Element. And the next one we're gonna do is Angular Elements, which is essentially uh, the web component version of Angular. And the next one is gonna be Stencil, which is made by the Ionic team. And then finally, Bip which actually I was looking at the website earlier and it does seem like uh, that there is some paid versions of BIP. So it'll be interesting to find out more about that. And then finally Svelte. So Lit Element is one of the projects made by the Polymer team. They actually have two different projects. They've got Lit Element and they've got Lit HTML. So Lit HTML, Lit HTML, is essentially the templating part of it. And I guess it comes bundled with lit element. So once you NPM install lit element, uh, you get lit HTML with it. It's essentially just template literals, but it has some extra efficiency and features uh, that make it worth using. So we'll go back to lit element. So we're gonna look at the website uh, I've not done anything in this before, so I'm gonna be learning as we go along. So we're gonna look at the website, we're gonna look at the documentation. We'll have a look at the size of the community, so how popular it is. We're gonna try and create the same web component in all these frameworks. We'll just create like a simple progress bar. Just see how easy it is to follow along, how good the tutorials are, how good the documentation is. At the end, we can compare all the different frameworks against each other. Looking at the website, it's a pretty simple, clean website. There's nothing much to it. Really no images, it's just basically straight to the code. Uh, when I was looking at this website earlier, one thing I really liked is they have built-in editors. You can use a TypeScript version, you can use a JavaScript version. I actually don't mind either. I'd probably personally use a TypeScript one, but I'm not sure if the rest of the Framework support TypeScript or out of the box like this one does. So just to keep things simple, I'm just gonna use a JavaScript one. So I guess on the home page they've got a simple a simple element that just outputs hello world. 
so it seems like it has some properties there uh, there's a class extending the element there's a run render function and it's returning that lit HTML string right there that's pulled from lit element it's cool to see how they do that I wonder what, what that is um, so I guess if we change name to something else let's say hashtag coder that should refresh that's cool all right and then at the end they've just defined it I guess this is just a JavaScript file and there'll be HTML file and there it is simple greeting so I guess if we change it to simple greet for example that's cool it's back no it's very cool seems pretty easy to use uh, one thing I like about this website is they have a guide with a getting started guide I guess this is if you want to uh, set it up on your own computer oh they have their own polymer CLI uh, that converts module names to parts on the fly and a configure a build, configurable build tool that packages your code for deployment all right otherwise you can just try so it's a live editable code and this is the tutorial so I'm just gonna go through this all right in this step you'll find gaps in the starting code to create an element class with a basic HTML element all right so it's got an import statement uh, empty class and then a define statement so click to launch the editor number one import the element base class and HTML helper all right Let Element HTML from the element fail to execute to find a custom element. All right, then they're putting a render function in there. And he's just returning a string. Registering a new element called my element. So my dash element. Okay. Something's supposed to have happened here. Got to extend the element basic. Boom, and there it is. Very cool. All right, simple enough if you're paying attention. So, one thing I really like about the element seems like it's pretty easy to use. No syntax that will really catch you out. You just got to remember to extend the library. It has really cool TypeScript support as well seems like it's got so it's using TypeScript decorators to define the template name that's pretty cool so you get some benefits of using TypeScript so it's really cool to see that type of support there um, and on the whole I mean it's a pretty clean website it looks like there's plenty of documentation right here one of the good indicators is by looking at the, the github it's got 164 watches uh, 2,500 stars. That's really good. 230 forks. Um, how recent was the last commit? I wonder. Uh, 20 days ago. So it's it's pretty active in development. Another way to check is if we npm the element. Now we can see how many downloads it has. So it's about 31,000 weekly downloads. That's 
that's pretty good going and it looks like it's picking up steam and this was back in 2018 and it's been um, since I guess July uh, it's been getting a lot of popularity so it's cool to see that all right so here's what we're gonna do I have this old component I made for my last web components video checking out the v1 spec in ES6 back in I think I made that video in 2017. What I'm going to try and do is rather than remaking this, I'm just going to try and convert this into a lit element a web component locally and just see how that goes, see how easy it is to do that. So now we're just going to install lit element into our project. We've got the index file loaded. I'm just going to copy in everything from here and then we can start converting it over. That's the index file. Then I guess I'm going to need a progress bar JS file. Progress bar JS. And I'm just going to copy this in. Cool. And then we are going to import lit element and HTML from lit element. Cool. and then we don't need that we do need that and then if I remember uh, to define a property static get properties and then we've got return and then we've got complete and it's a number oh. I guess it's type number that's better and we don't need this getter we don't need this setter and we don't need this and the custom elements to define so that is cool and we don't need that and i guess that's the template so that's our render method all right so here we'll return template and uh, attribute change callback. I'm not sure what that is yet, but I guess we'll find out. But for now, we should just see if this is gonna work. All right, so the document said polymer serve. I guess we have to install it globally. So npmi-g polymer dash CLI all right cool now we can do polymer serve all right so if we option click that web components nothing there Syntax, progress bar one, unexpected token. So firstly, we forgot to do that. Secondly, we forgot to, we can just return HTML like that and remove this. And then have a look what is up everyone it is actually the next day I spent a little bit of time debugging yesterday I don't want to bore you with all of that as you can see we did get something kind of working right now and I'll tell you exactly what it was it was just this so one of the nuances with using 
newer technologies, newer frameworks is, you know, sometimes not everything is immediately obvious. It's easy to overlook things. You have to use conventions that you're not overly familiar with. So in this case, we just needed to set this progress bar script as a JavaScript module. So just to recap, without it, we were getting the unexpected token. And with it, we have the working web component. I did a quick search on the type attribute. It's right there. And the Mozilla developer documentation just says it causes the code to be treated as a JavaScript module. Uh, there is some more reading material here. I'm gonna be doing some reading, maybe do another video on this, uh, compatibility with browsers and all of that. Uh, if you guys are interested, you should do that as well. But anyway, back to trying to complete this web component in lit element or trying to convert it. So now we have something working. The final piece was to get this blue bar actually filling up as that percentage goes up. So you can see in the script, uh, we just have a uh, interval that is filling that, that progress bar up and if we just uncomment this and just see what happens. All right, so we're getting cannot read property query, query selector of undefined. I do know somewhere there is, we can use the shadow DOM. See if we can, oh, there you go. All right, so shadow root. So let's just see if that's the convention that I use. If I change that. Okay, cannot properly read property style of null. Mm. Oh, also that and maybe if we, Got this. So if it's there, let's see if that does anything. Sweet. All right. So there is something flashing down here, but it seems to be working. Let's see what this error is. It cannot read property node type of null. Now I was doing some offline reading. Um, you, Basically what I saw was because we're using lit HTML, uh, you shouldn't be changing the uh, changing the content within HTML. And from what I understand anyway, uh, this value should auto update regardless. And actually we did see that before. So if I comment that line out, sweet, there we go. That's awesome. Yeah, looks like everything's working. Cool. So we can just get rid of that. And let's just have a look at the code. I think overall it's a lot clearer and cleaner than a, a raw web component. Code looks a lot cleaner. I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Uh, I did see some stuff where just like you have this HTML decorator, there is also one for styles, I think. Yeah, and you can define your styles uh, in a cleaner way. So there's a lot more to it. Uh, I'm not gonna dive in too deep. First impressions, I am impressed. Uh, I, would, I am looking forward to comparing this to the other frameworks that are available. I'm gonna put this code up in a repo. I'm going to have a repo where uh, it compares all the different types of frameworks uh, just recreating the same progress bar in each one. You know, overall, it's been interesting. Be interested to find out what you guys think. Is it something that you think you may use in a future project? Let me know your thoughts down below. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next part in the series, which is going to be on Angular Elements. So looking forward to that. Until then, I'll see you later.